Good day, yogis. This is Stephen Chang coming to you live from Simhayoga Lab in Jersey City, New Jersey. Please visit my website, simhayoga.com, for the full streaming schedule as well as my payment information for Venmo and for PayPal. My preferred way of payment is through Venmo, and my handle is Simhayoga Lab. And the four-digit ID code is 8096 if you're prompted for it. And um, uh, classes are $10 if you're having a difficult time right now, $5 is fine. I'm streaming on Facebook and on Instagram. And then the videos are uploaded as postings. And then the same videos are also uploaded to my YouTube channel, Simply with a Lab. Um, the audio video is better on my YouTube, so if you're having a difficult time with the audio video on Instagram and Facebook, um, and you're not actually streaming with me, but you're actually taking classes throughout the day, you might actually want to go to the YouTube instead. Um, you can also bring that up on your uh, smart TV, so that might be a much better audio video experience for you free practice. Okay, today's class is open flow. It is a level one and level two. For those of you who are new to the practice and new to my practice in general, um, you uh, might want to make sure that you check in if I'm going a little bit out of your range, right? So if I'm doing my postures and um, variations on level two stuff that's a little bit out of your range, please pull back a little bit and come back to the basic pose. I um, often give you modifications, which makes the poses a little bit easier, more supportive, and then variations to make them more challenging. And then there's always the basic pose that you can go back to, right? So there are many different options to every pose. So listen to the instructions, hopefully they're clear, and do the best you can to kind of like put it all together. Um, if um, all else fails, um, maybe take a child pose, pull back all together and wait for the next pose that is more appropriate for your level of practice, okay? So please always be mindful, make some good decisions about what you should and shouldn't do and so that you don't hurt yourselves, okay? So especially if you have limitations or working with any injuries, all right? So, all right, for so those of you who are tight around the hips or your lower back, I recommend elevation by sitting up on a block a blanket, a towel, or some books. Okay, comfortable cross-legged position. Let the palms face up, fingers come together, and we'll the thumb and index fingers touching. Resting your hands on top of your knees, elbows alongside the ribs. Eyes are closed, lips touching. Start to regulate your breath by breathing only through your nose. And through the breath of the mind, start to quiet. And let your inhales and ground with the exhales. Three arms together. Sabahya, Sabahya, Bihyendraha, 
in a blank. Exhale, chaturanga. In a up dog. Exhale, down dog. In a blank. Exhale, chaturanga. In a up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, reach your left leg up, three legged dog. Exhale, left knee in toward the nose, around the spine. Kick it up, open up the hips, bend the left knees. So as you stack the hips, left knees reaching up, right heels reaching down. Raise your left leg back up, square off the hips. Step the left forward. Warning one, arms up high. Inhale, lengthen front leg, reach up. Bend the front knee, arms alongside. Inhale, lengthen front leg, reach up. Bend the front knee, arms alongside. Inhale up and keeping the arms up this time. Bend the front knee, warrior one. Open it up, warrior two. Reverse warrior. Exhale, side angle. So your options again, left hand directly to your foot, right arm up. That's the full expression of your side angle. Or modify it, making it a little bit easier, more supportive. You can take the, hat, uh, the elbow to top of the leg, right arm up. So that's easier for your lower back, easier for your hips. Inhale, all the way back up. Reverse warrior. Exhale, hands to the floor. Left foot stepping back plank. In a one breath. Exhale, charm. In a left dog. Exhale, down. Inhale, raise your right leg up. Three leg dog. Exhale, right knee toward the nose and round. Kick it up. Open up the hips and bend the right knee. Right knee to outside of the right arm and right touch. Kick back up. Knee comes into twist and touch your left arm. Kick it back up. Step the right foot forward. Warrior one. Exhale, open it up. Warrior two. Lengthen the front leg and reach up. Bend the front knee, warrior two. Three times. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, take it down. Inhale. Exhale, warrior two. Lengthen out the right leg, triangle. Tip the left hip back, reach your right hand forward. Right hand directly to the floor, left arm up if you're taking the full expression of the pose. If you modify, same thing here, elevation. Take the right hand to top of the shin, right? And left arm up. If this is very easy for you and you have a little bit more range, maybe you can walk your right hand further down. And then, of course, if you don't need the hand to the shin, take the full pose. Inhale, take it all the way back up. Now, to come up safely, bend the right knee ever so slightly so you reduce the tension to your hamstrings. So that when you come up, you are going to avoid pulling at the hamstrings. Right? And then you can re-lengthen as you take it up and back into reverse triangle. And then bend the front knee, hands to the floor, right foot stepping back to plank. Exhale, charm. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down. Left heel up. Left knee in toward the nose. Kick it up. Open up the hips and bend the left knee. Left knee, outside the left arm and touch. Kick the back up. Knee comes into twist. Touch your right arm. Kick the back up. Step the left foot forward. Warrior one. Open it up, warrior two. Lengthen front leg and reach up. Bend the front knee, warrior two. Lengthen reach up, warrior two. Lengthen reach up, warrior two. Lengthen on the left leg, triangle. Tip the right back, left hand forward. So this time we'll take the modified first, right? Hand to top of shin if you need a little modification. Maybe a little bit lower if you don't need as much, or directly to the floor if you're taking a full pose. Right, so you notice how if you're taking a full pose, or even in the modified position, if you're fully extending the leg, right, there is an extension in the hamstrings. Now, if you're not particularly strong and you're just kind of struggling with your triangle, right? If you try to put too much weight onto your right foot and come up with straight legs, 
You could pull your hamstrings, right? That's why I mentioned on the first side, you bend your knee ever so slightly. That will reduce that pressure to the hamstring, so that when you come up, it's a lot easier and a lot safer. Let's do that together here. Bend the left knee ever so slightly, and then press into the left foot to come up. And then you can re-extend the left leg to take the left arm up and back into your reverse triangle. And then bend the front knee, hands to the floor. Left foot, stepping back, plank. In a one breath. Exhale, charm up. You know, dog. Exhale, down. Inhale, right knee up. Exhale, right knee in toward the nose. Kick it up, open up the hips, bend the right knee, and flip the dog. Roll arms out, out the left foot, and drop the right foot back behind you. Flip it back around again, right leg up, three leg the dog, step the right foot forward between your hands, left knee comes down for crescent moon. Alright, so if you need extra padding to your left knee because your left knee is sensitive, take that extra cushion, it will be a lot easier with your uh, blanket or your towels. If you don't need that extra cushioning, then directly to the floor. Walk your hands to the thighs and lunge forward. When you lunge forward, you're getting a stretch into your quads and your hips. You want to line up the right knee with the right heel and ground through that front heel strongly. That's your point of stabilization, right? Lunging forward. Then press your hands to your thighs, lean the upper torso back, and that will be the beginning of your back bend. And then you naturally start to look slightly upwards. Now try not to crunch the back of the neck and look straight up, but instead, keep the back of the neck supported and long. And the back bend is actually coming from your mid and upper back bend, right? As you lift the sternum up, you're pointing the gaze upwards, right? It's not coming from the back of the neck crunching. It's actually coming from the mid and upper back going into the back bend, all right? And then arms up, lean as well. Right, you are welcome to stay here for about five more breaths. Those of you taking your additional variations, take whatever you want. Options could be hands back behind you. You can find hand to foot. Maybe take both hands to your left foot and kick back. When you kick back, you can also walk your hands lower so you can flex your foot and reach for your heel instead of a pointed toe position. So those are good options. Or you can take it in a modified position, right? Hands to cover the thighs. And just concentrate on the hips um, moving forward. All right, let's start to break. Hands to the side, the left foot. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Stay in that low lunge. Left hand stays down, right arm up to the twist. Right hand behind you, half bind and twist deeper. Raise your right arm back up, right hand to the floor. Kick the right leg up, three leg it down. Right knee comes into twist, touch your left arm. Kick it back up again, fall on triangle. Right leg over to the left side and extend. Step it back, left, left hand down, right leg up. This time, lizard, step the right foot forward to the outside of the right hand. Now, if your hips are pretty flexible, and you can keep the right toes pointing forward, line up the knee with the heel, staying here, walking your hands forward, and lowering the forearms. That is an option, right, if you're more open. However, if your hips are tight, you need to turn the right toes out to the side, about 30 to 45 degrees. Let the right thigh also turn out in the same direction. Right? So when you turn the foot and the thigh in the same direction, you're going into the hip. Right? And that will that rotation will make it a lot easier for you. Right? So once you have that positioning, walk your hands forward, lower your forearms. Now if lowering your forearms is rather difficult and you have a support structure, you can take your blocks, right? It could also be your blankets. Right? So I've already elevated, what is that, about three or four inches up, right? And that might make a difference. So if you have blankets, use them. 
Then you have options. Once you're here in kitchen, you can keep your left toes tucked under, left knee off the floor. So this is more active, right? So the back leg is more active, reaching back through the heel. You can also take it more passively. Left knee comes down, untuck the toes, and the left leg is not doing that much other than just kind of stabilizing. Right, so most of the action is happening into that right hip. This is your lizard. All right, let's start to break. Walk it back in. Let's stay here. If your toes are pointing forward, turn the right toes out. If the left knee is up, take the left knee down and untuck the toes. Right? We'll take um, a lizard combined with the crescent moon here. So lifting up, keep the right toes pointing out to the side, right thigh turning out to the side. Walk your left hand a little wider. So now the tripod is a little bit wider than before. Raise your right arm up, right hand behind you, half behind your twist. Now the hips are moving straight forward, right? Try not to roll to the side of the leg and let that left side collapse. Keep the hips moving straight forward. So it is a stretch of the front of the left um, hip, left thigh. The rotation happens from the spine. If you're going further, you can bend your left knee, grab the inside of the foot with your right hand, and kick back. All right. Begin to release, turn the right toes back forward. You might even have to walk your foot in a little bit. Then, frame your right foot with your hands, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, pyramid, lengthen over your right leg. So this time, you're going more into a hamstring stretch. Now, if you have the flexibility and you just support your hands to the floor, stay there. If you need some support and you have blocks, Right, so notice now the blocks are an extension of your arms. This lengthening of your arms basically takes your torso higher, which reduces the tension to your hamstrings and your hips, right? So this could be a much uh, more accessible position for you. So take blocks if you have them. Now, if you have a very sturdy book, right? You can use one book and then use both hands to the inside of the foot. If you have a water bottle, water bottle works the same, right? You just take a water bottle and maybe just very carefully press your hands to top of the water bottle and that will help you as an extension of your arms, all right? So all those are very good options. Just be creative what you can use around the house as props. All right, bend the front knee, ground the palms, step the right foot back plank, exhale. Lower all the way down to the belly. Sphinx pose. Walk your hands forward. Take the forearms down. Grab opposite elbows, right? And this is what's um, measuring out your shoulders width with the arms. And once you have that, take the arms to the floor, your forearms to the floor, and they're parallel to each other, about shoulders width. Palms are flat. Press your belly and your lower ribs down toward the floor, which flattens your lower back a little bit. So that now, when you press your forearms down and lift your chest, the back bend is ha happening a little higher on the mid back instead of the lower back. Right? Starting from the mid back. And as you press your belly and your ribs down and lift your chest up, that is your back bend. Looking slightly forward so that the neck is neither in flexion or too much in extension. A little bit more neutral would be good. Now, if you have more back bending than you and you want to go deeper, then work with me. If you don't, stay here in your um, sphinx pose, right? This is a good enough back bend. Going deeper, press your palms down, lift the elbows. So this is your Bhujangasana, right? So this is your cobra pose. So as you elevate, the back bend goes down the spine, a little bit lower. So now it's maybe halfway between your mid-back, your thoracic spine, and then your lumbar spine, your lower back. All right, if you have even more in you, bend the elbows a little bit. Walk your hands in, one hand print. Keeping the elbows bent, you're gonna roll the shoulders forward, 
up, and as your leg tends to come up, draw the shoulders back and down. Stay here, or if you have one more here, notice the higher up you go, the lower the back bend. Bend the elbows first, walk the hands in. Keeping the elbows bent, roll the shoulders forward, up and back, as you lengthen out the arms. So this is your full cobra. All right, everyone, start to make your way back down and walk your hands back in alongside the ribcage and very gently, we've been holding that back bend for a while, very gently lift up into child's pose and taking the seat toward the heels nice and slow, nice and slow. And now we have to re-stretch your lower back go the opposite direction from a back bend into a forward bend. Taking your blocks to your forearms if you can manage 
uh, with the left toes pointing straight forward the lizard. Now, if you cannot, and that's too tight for you, turn the left toes out 45 degrees or so. A little bit less is okay, 30 to 45 degrees. Making sure that the left thigh, the left foot is about the same angle out. So then this goes into your hips instead of your knees and your ankles, okay? And then walk your hands forward about a foot, lower your forearms down. You can stay there, or again, your option to take the blocks. Now, back leg. You can keep it active, right knee off the floor, right toes tucked under. Or right knee comes down, untuck the toes. So you have all of those options. Pick and choose, combine whatever makes the best, um, most supportive pose for you. Right, so you want it to be a little bit of a challenge so that you're working more aggressively deeper into poses. And, but at the same time, you don't want it to be all struggle and no ease, right? So find the balance between effort and ease. Right? That's with every pose that we do here. Right? You want the pose to be accessible enough, but you want it to be uh, progressively working deeper. So you want a little bit of a challenge, but you don't want it to be so much that you're just stressing into the pose, right? Now we're actually tightening the muscles instead. All right, let's combine the poses, your lizard and your crescent moon. Lift the elbows back up, walk your hands back in. Uh, if your right knee is off the floor, I should have said that first. If your right knee is off the floor, take the right knee down and untuck the toes. Then lift the elbows and walk back in. So that's actually a better sequence of movement. If your left toes, left knee is pointing forward, turn the toes and the knee out to the side. Right? Then walk your right hand a little bit wider. So now your triangle that you're balancing on is a little bit wider. Inhale, raise your left arm up and behind the cheeks and half find a twist. Now again, you do not want to fall to the side of the leg. You want the hips to be moving straight forward. The twist happens at the spine. And then if you add them up, left arm behind you, right? Or binding hand to foot. Alright, starting to break. Release your right foot, take your hands back down, turn the left toes forward. You're going to have to walk the left foot back in a little bit so that you can frame your left foot with your hands, tuck the back toes, and then lengthen over the left leg. Right, you should feel amazing here now, right? Because we were taking that lunge for so long. So the front of the right hip is getting that openness. Now it's getting a compression, right? Contraction. Right, so you go in the opposite direction then with your hips. And continue to support with the blocks to the hands if you need them. Two more breaths. Alrighty, let's break. Bend the left knee, ground the palm. Step the left foot back plank. In our breath, exhale lower all the way down to the belly. Again, stick your sphinx. Grab opposite elbows to measure out shoulders width. Take the forearms down. Press your belly and your lower ribs down and lift your chest in up position. All right, doing the best you can here. Turn the right hand in, 45 degrees, so your right forearm, 45 degrees. Bend your right knee, reach back with the left hand, grab the foot and kick back. Uh, lift and look past your left shoulder. If this is available, take it. If not, you're still turning the right hand in, walk your left hand back, lift up higher, press into your left hand and look behind you. Right, so we're looking for a rotation in the spine as you lift here. 
and release. Take it back to center to your sphinx, and then switching sides. Left hand turns in and the forearm 45 degrees. Bend your left knee, reach your right hand back, grab the foot, kick back and lift higher. Look past your right shoulder behind you. And again, if you're not taking this variation, your right hand walks back alongside the ribs. Lift up, press into your right hand and look behind you. And start to release. Walk your hands back, child's pose. Lift up and very slowly transition back to your child's pose. Going from that back bend now into a forward bend. Now, so be very mindful always when you go from deep back bends to transition back to a forward bend. You don't go fast, right? You want to go slow so that you are gently beginning to take the opposite direction and stretch it back out in the opposite direction. All right. Take it back up. Down dog. Start to step the left foot forward, low lunge. Rise right forward, stand for a bend. Feet together, knees together. Take it up, chair pose. Stepping on the left foot, pick up the right knee. Left hand to the right knee, so opposite hand and foot. Reach your right arm back to twist. Now keep the gaze looking forward, right? Keep um, the right knee lining up with the right hip. So try not to let the knee steer to either direction. Keep the hips. Um, facing forward and knee over the heel, uh, and knee over the uh, line up the hip. Now, if you want to take this deeper, you want to grab the right foot, grab the right foot, extend forward. Same thing, heel lines up the hip, shooting straight forward, right arm reaching back. Now, once you have all of this, whatever you decide to do, hand to knee or hand to foot, once you're stable and you have proper alignment, again, heel shooting straight forward from the hip. Do not let your legs travel side to side. Right? Shooting straight forward. Then, once you have all that in place, if you want to look back, you can look back. Take the gaze back forward again. Hopefully, you can check that you're still in alignment. Then, start to release and walk it out. Right? As you're neutralizing, let me explain that to you. Oftentimes, this is what I observe. People take the pose, hand to knee or hand to foot, and they start to look back and extend, and this is what happens. You see how the hip is completely rotated to the side, and even though they're taking the extension, they have no idea that the legs are going this way because they're already looking back, right? So I think it's better that you pay attention looking forward, knowing what your hips and your legs are doing, with the alignment, the rotation to twist to go back can happen without you looking at all, right? That can work independently. And you can go to deepest twist with no effect. Then once you have the full twist and you're comfortable with that, your alignment forward is um, correct, then you can just turn your head and nothing else moves, right? So that to me is a much more effective way of keeping your alignment but also deepening into the pose, right? So check in with yourself if that's your habit. If you look back and have no idea what the front leg is doing, right? That is poor alignment. So make sure you're checking in. Okay, coming back forward. Bend the knees, come up chair. Stepping on the right foot, pick up the left knee. So you're looking forward. Right hand to the left knee, or the right hand to outside the left foot. Extend forward. Check in to that alignment. Then extend the left arm back. You can twist as deeply as you want, it doesn't matter, right? What matters are your hips pointing forward and your left heel lining up with the left hip or the left knee lining up with the left hip. And once you have everything stable, nothing else moves except you turn your head to look behind you. And be mindful that the front leg is not traveling, that you feel like it's moving, 
the human look forward again and come back to proper alignment. And then maybe just stay there, right? All right, let's start to break. When you look forward again, hopefully you're still in alignment. That's how you check. And then start to release. Step it down and walk it out. Right? So that same principle happens for poses when you're sitting down, okay? Same thing. If you look behind you before you extend, this is what happens all the time. Right? Check in with yourself. Then you're completely off alignment. But if you do this, right, and then look back, nothing else has to change. All right, uh, facing forward. All right, come back to center, feet together, knees together. Bend the knees, keep the arms high, chair. Exhale, dive forward, crow pose. Hands come forward, about a foot and a half from your toes, shoulders width, palms flat. Fingers wide spread. It is your middle finger stuck that point forward. Now notice if that elbow pieces. Those of you who know your crow, go ahead. Those of you who need a little bit of help, right? Notice that when you first place your hands down, chances are your um, crease of the elbows or the eyes of the elbows are facing each other. So that when you bend the elbows, they go sideways, right? This is not good at all for your wrists because when you go out sideways, you're compressing the wrist on the outside of the wrist and then the inside of the wrist comes away from the floor and you're also overstretching. And then also, you're not bone stacking, so this doesn't give you a lot of power to hold up the weight of the body in your, in your crow pose. Versus, if you take your hands, right, index, uh, your middle finger is pointing straight forward, and you rotate, the crease of the elbows forward, and that comes from the shoulder ro rotating, right? And the shoulders are rotating to face the crease of the elbows forward. When you bend the elbows, elbows drop back. When your elbows drop back, you take your arms closer to your knees so that you can take the knees firmly up against the back of the arms or to the side of the arms, pressing inwards. Then gaze slightly forward, and as you tiptoe forward, and you bear weight over your wrists. Notice that when your elbows line up over your wrists, you start to get lighter on your toes, and you can lift the feet off the floor, possibly, right? So it does take a little bit of trial and error to see how much you have to shift forward for your toes to get light enough to come off the floor. Now, for those of you where, even if you came to a vertical line, you feel too heavy in your feet. That might mean you have to walk your hands further forward. And that's all relative to how tall you are, right? And how long your limbs are. If your limbs are really long, right, you can actually accommodate for more distance between your feet and your hands. So let's say you're about six foot four versus someone who's five foot six like myself. The proportions are completely different, right? So if you're six foot four, you can afford to walk your hands further forward. In fact, that's what I encourage. So that when you shift the weight forward, you can bear more weight forward, right? Notice that your hands are too close and you're here. You get to a vertical line. All the weight are still on your feet. It's next to impossible to lift your feet, right? Versus if you take your hands forward and you shift to your tiptoes, so that now, when you take your elbows to line up over your wrists, your weight is already transferred forward by that much, right? So, keep in mind that when you're taller, your proportions are different, you can probably have to take more distance. Now, if you're still five, six, five, eight, and you take this foot in half and you can't manage to do it, Try if you walk your hands a little bit further forward, if that will make it more successful for you. Because the further you walk your hands forward, but you can maintain this contact between the knees and the arms, the more you can transfer the weight from back here forward. Because ultimately, what happens is when your elbows line up over your wrists, is when the weight transfers further forward, right? So this, right, is about two. A little bit more than a foot and a half. It's not by two feet, right? So this weight transfer is very different than this weight transfer. You see, I'm already elbows over the wrist, but you see how my my heels are not even lifted that much. That means the weight is still further back, 
I don't have enough way further forward. If I go any further forward, it's a fixed point, right? Versus if I take my hands further, notice what my feet are doing, as well as my uh, elbows and wrists. When I line up my elbows over my wrists, you see how high I am on my toes? This means I'm much lighter here, right? Versus if my elbows go through my wrists here, you see how my heels are really low, right? So that's how you can play with distance between your hands and your feet and how much weight you bear forward. There is a balance you have to find, right? So experiment, hands further forward, hands further back. Recommendation, most people of average height, I find about a foot and a half is pretty good, right? All right, uh, so pro pose we've done. Make your way back to back now. All right, pigeon pose. Raise your left leg up, three-legged dog. Draw the left knee in, land the shin to the floor. You're in a pointed left toe position. You're standing on the left shin. Hands supporting, inch ready for the back. Now notice that the left thigh is angled out this time. So rather than uh, lined up with the hip, this time the better alignment is to let the left knee, left thigh angle out to side 30 to 45 degrees. Then as you inch your right knee back, you lower your seat, untuck the toes, walk your hands back. Now if you did this rotation, right, with the thigh, and the left leg is further out to the side, it's actually helping you to stay up. Because if you line up the hip with the knee, if you come up high and reach back, and you don't have a lot of flexibility, you end up sitting down. When you end up sitting down, right, notice, when you end up sitting down, you're crunching this side of the waist, you're overextending this side, and then you tend to bear weight to this side, and you're falling off to this side. For you not to fall off to the left side, you have to curve your spine and reach back this way just so that you don't fall. If I come back to vertical, my weight goes like that. That's why, for most people, the knee lined up with the hip does not work. If you take the knee wider to the side, that actually helps you to stay in a much more level position with your pelvis so that you can inch your right knee further back, lengthen the spine, and if you did this properly and you have all these shapes, you're actually in balance without using your hands. Right? So that is the true um, aligned structure here, right? If you angle out the left knee to side, you're actually balancing on a triangle. This triangle stabilizes you enough to give you a level pelvis and a lengthy spine. Once you have all of that set up, you can walk your hands forward, you can be on your forearms, you can make pillows with the hands. Right? Forearms, pillows with the hands and rest your forehead, or forehead all the way down. Right? Those are all good options, whatever is the most um, uh, achievable for you, right? For those of you with tight hips, this could be rather difficult. If that is the case, you have several options. You can draw in and stay up a little higher and walk your forearms forward, right? So it's a matter of you taking this pose with the balance of effort and ease. If by lowering your, lowering your hips too far down and then it really is stressful for you to come forward, then better to decrease the depth of the hips and then be able to come forward and then sink into the pose, right? So, um, so that way you can get some stretch without being um, really uh, too rigorous and too stressful about it, right? Because when it becomes too stressful, your muscles tend to um, tighten up. All right, it's time to break. Lift back up, walk it back in. Tuck the back toes and press into your hands to lift the left shin and walk it back to down dog. And take lots of movement side to side. All right, come back to stillness. Second side, take the right leg up, draw the right knee and land the shin to the floor. So you're in a pointed right toe position. Land the shin to the floor. 
right knee, right thigh should already be angling up to side about 30 to 45 degrees. With your hand supporting, inch your left knee from the back so you can lower the hips, untuck the toes. Then walk your hands back, and this is where you test out your balance, right? Right knee, right thigh, 30 to 45 degrees. I'm not falling over to the right side. I'm balancing on my right shin. My pelvis feels level. My spine feels pretty vertical. And I can do all this balance without my hands. Right? That's how you measure that. Make your way forward. You can be in forearms. You can make pillows with the hands. Right? So I really encourage you, when you set up for your pigeon, that you don't feel like you're falling to one side and then you're struggling to come back to center. Because that means if you're falling to the right side and struggling back to center, the only way you can do that is to curve your spine sideways. And we do not want a curved spine here. We want a straight spine to come forward. Beginning to finish up. And when you're ready, walk your hands back in. Tuck the left toes under. Lift up and walk it back to your down dog. And pedal out the legs. Take it side to side. Start to walk, your feet forward toward your hands, take the seat down. Alright, so keep the knees bent, walk your feet in, walk your feet in toward each other, take the feet together, and the thighs together. Grab the back of the legs, shift back toward the sacrum, the base of the spine, and raise your shins. Right, you're balanced here. This is your sacrum. Where you're balancing is your sacrum. Right? So when teachers tell you, when you go into poses where, let's say for example in a bridge pose, you take the block to the sacrum. That's where you're taking it. Exactly where you're balancing now is where your sacrum is. Okay? Alright, if you don't need your hands, move the arms forward. Now we tend to round the spine, right? I want you to think about lifting the chest and then leaning the head back. So imagine if your spine is in a diagonal. Which direction should your gaze be, right? If your spine is in a diagonal, you certainly should not be looking forward, right? You should not be looking up. You should be looking in a diagonal, about 45 degrees forward, which is about in line with where your spine is right now, right? So as I was talking, you should have been holding all this, right? So by now, you should be feeling your core, your lower back. You might even feel like your quads. Oh, I'm even beginning to feel my shins too. Right, so this is static contraction. You're holding all the contractions of the muscles to hold this pose, right? And you're staying still. So that's static contraction. Five. Four, three, two, one. Release your legs forward, arms up, and forward fold. All right, so when you take your forward fold, always think about lengthening as to the spine. Try not to round and shrug your shoulders, right? Always like that. Now, if you can't go all the way forward, grab your feet. Even if you're higher like this, 
If you keep the integrity of that lengthiness of the spine, and then you hinge at the hips and draw forward, feeling for the lower back stretch, and maybe a little bit of hamstrings, right? Mainly lower back stretch. That's really what we want here in the forward fold, that lower back stretch. As soon as you ground the spine, you're gonna feel very little. So, if you keep the integrity of that spine and hinge forward at the hips, then you get the benefits of the lower back stretch. All right, start to come back up. Hands to the side. As you press your hands to the floor and slide the hands out, that's going to assist you in carrying the weight of the torso to come down onto a reclining position safely and slowly. Keep the left arm out, left knee comes in, and twist to the right. So you're going into a spinal twist. Try to keep the left arm, left shoulder blades flat to the floor. You're rolling to the outer right leg, outer right hip for the spinal rotation. Take back to center, switch legs, switch arms. Right arm up, right knee comes in. Twist to your left. All right, so the left hand can go to the outer right leg as an assist, a little bit of weight to press down, using that resistance to go deeper into your pose. And take it back to center again. Hug the knees in. And then step the feet to the floor, slide the legs forward, separating the feet, toes turned out, arms alongside the body, palms facing up. Javasana, final relaxation, let it all go. Begin to draw the breath back in. And start to move the fingers and the toes. Reach the arms overhead, stretching in opposite directions. Rolling over to the right side, come up to a comfortable cross leg position. Reconnecting to an even seat, a lengthy spine, shoulders broad, the breath deep, and let the neck be free. Thank you.